Hey, welcome back to The Marianne Hickman Show. Today is talk tips number 19, and we're going to be talking about a term that you've probably never heard before called stage geography. What is it and how does it support your presentation? Check it out. Okay, what the heck is stage geography? What does that even mean? Then this is a term that I learned years and years and years ago, and it actually is a subconscious maneuvering of your body, not just your body language, but your body position on the stage to support the storytelling of your message. Now, you've probably heard this before. Facts tell, stories sell. So a lot of your signature keynote is going to be telling your history, telling your story. Now, not necessarily in chronological timeline order. We don't need a recitation of this happened this day, then this happened this day. No, none of that is supportive to your message. I want your message to be not chronologically accurate, but sequentially accurate. If you've ever picked up a book and the book started with a cliffhanger, or we call it now hooks on TikTok, you're kind of uh, sharing the hook out of order of the delivery of the message. It's the thing that grabs you in. And just like there is a way to craft your message, there is a way to share the message physically on stage that supports it. So I go into great, great, great detail with graphics and charts on this in my course, but I wanna give you kind of a taste of what that looks like right here on the podcast. So there's really, one, two, three, four, five different spots on the stage that you can leverage to support your storytelling. Let's talk about first connecting with your audience. Now, most speakers are afraid to do this. They are afraid that if they get off the stage, the pedestal will be kicked out from under them and they'll like break the fourth wall and they'll kind of be less credible. And then they couldn't be further from the truth. When you actually take a step off the stage and go down and connect with your audience, it breaks down the fourth wall, it breaks down barriers, and it helps people see you as a person. Pedestal syndrome is one of the worst things that you can have in any business because it keeps people from being honest with you. And people can't be honest with you. You have a crappy business, internally and externally. So you've got to be seen eye level, same person to person. If you ever watch Tony Robbins or go to one of his events, you see he's off the stage most of the time. And there's a camera guy following him around so that everyone can see him. So that's position one. That's connection. When you've walked off the stage and you're walking up and down the aisles of your audience, connecting eye to eye with them. Position two is the position of authority. Now, this is the very front and center of the stage. You're talking with your toes literally hanging off the edge of the stage. And it, it's very engaging for the audience. It's fun to watch them to lean in when you do this. When you're speaking from this spot on the stage, your body, body language is very minimal. You don't use a lot of hand movements. You don't use a lot of pacing. You're definitely not leaning back and forth. You have to buy permission to use this spot on the stage because if you overdo it, it will lose its credibility. This spot on the stage is used very rarely and it's to punch the PowerPoints. These are the mic drop moments. These are the one-liners that then become memes on Instagram and TikTok. This is the position of authority, front and center, toes off the front of the edge of the stage. Now, there's a teaching spot on the stage. Let's imagine when I say stage left and stage right, this is your position on stage, looking into the audience. So if I'm stage left or on my left side of the stage and I'm toward the back of the stage, this is where my easel sits. If you've ever noticed at the live events how most often the easel is in the same position on the stage, there's a reason for that. Psychologically, it helps people because from the audience's perspective, they're seeing it on their right. And people read from left to right. So if it's on the audience's right-hand side, they're seeing it as part of their future or where they want to go. I'm gonna get more into that in a minute. So that's where your easel is. If you have an easel or a notepad, or if you have a single screen and it's not behind you, it should be on your left just left of center toward the back of the stage. Now let's talk about left and right. This is position four and position five. When I'm telling my story from stage, remember the audience reads from left to right, okay? So I want to be on the audience's left or my right side when I'm in the past of my story, when I'm in the hard parts of my story, when I'm being vulnerable, when I'm sharing from my heart, when the emotions come up, I'm gonna spend some time over here. 
And when I then move to my left side of the front of the stage this time, or in other words, the audience is right, because again, audiences read left to right, their left to right, my right to left. On my left, toward the front of the stage, this is where I'm talking about mentorship. This is where I'm talking about what I did to get out of the crappy position I was in. This is what I'm talking about when it's time to talk about what other people might do to take their next steps or what looking forward into the future looked like or what I hoped to be when things were really, really sucky. By leveraging these five positions of the stage, you can talk to all of the auditory senses and the physical senses and the visual senses of your audience because your audience, they're absorbing your message with their ears, they're absorbing your message with their eyes. They might be using their sense of touch because they're taking notes. The more senses that you can involve in your presentation, the better. By the way, only 7% of what you and I communicate is absorbed through our words. The rest of the 93% is observed through body language or taken in through tonality. That accounts for 93% of all understanding and all communication. And what's crazy is your audience knows this. They don't know that they know all the time, but they know this and they observe it. And any distrust or any incongruency or anything that confuses them is usually because your words don't match your tone or don't match your body language. The reason I want you to learn and understand stage geography is so that everything matches so that your story stays congruent within itself and has the best chance of impacting the audience for the better. Thanks for tuning in to Talk Tips. I hope you like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you wanna know more about my course, just send me a text, 801-509-5495. Marianne Hickman here again. Listen, I hope super helpful for you. Maybe you learned something new. Share with me in the comments what was valuable. Or if you have this whole separate question like, hey, I wanted to know about this. I wanted to know about stage fright. I wanna know how about my presentation on stage. I wanna know about how to dress on stage. Anything that you wanna know that's relevant to growing your business through stages, put in the questions. Cause like, guess what? I go through and answer all of those personally. That's not an agency or a VA. That's me going through and looking at your questions because you are who I am here for. So. Last thing is I want you to get this database if you haven't gotten it already. Now I've got thousands of downloads on this thing, so maybe you've got it, but if not, make sure you go to mariannehickman.com forward slash database. What that's gonna do is take you to a page. You're gonna input all of your information. We're gonna send the database to you. You're gonna request access to it. I keep it locked down so I can make sure I get it to just the right people. And you're gonna request access. And then once you have that, you're going to go through and apply to podcasts that have the topic that you'd be an expert speaking on. Here's the thing, I get this database updated twice a week. So there's always new stuff in there. And if you're a podcaster, there's even a list of guests that you can have on your show on that podcast. Maybe you end up doing a podcast swap and you grow your audience that way. Regardless, I want you to get it. So marianhickman.com forward slash database and we'll see you in the next talk tips.